All right. Good morning. Good morning. We're back. Today we're going to talk about teams. Yeah. And so if you're listening to this and, um, you know, it's on your mind that maybe one of one of your team members uh, or leaders in your organization is kind of off track and it's gotten you thinking more big picture about what's happening with your team as a whole, as your organization, how are you growing your cult, you know, the culture of your company, uh, then hopefully this will be helpful. Um, because the topic today is investing in your team. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times business owners get off into operating and, um, you know, serving their customers and doing the things that they should be doing. Yeah. And they forget that there needs to be an investment, an actual investment in the people that are operating the company. And it can't just be a Christmas party at the end of the year where you give everybody, you know, you know, hundred dollar gift card or something. I know if it was only that easy, huh? <laughs> That's right. It needs to really be more of a priority in, in the organization. Um, and, you know, I was kind of stopping there. I, I think a lot of times it can be overwhelming for operators who maybe are not geared this way because it seems like everything should be a priority, Right. <laughs> Yeah, and, so, and, and it's hard. You can overlook it very easily. As things are going well, that's something that would be overlooked. If sales are going well, um, everything's growing, yeah. and then, wait a second, you know, yeah, you have a team member leave because they weren't happy for something that could have been fixed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to neglect, and um, I think the mindset, really, as we kind of get going on this topic is to think about it as an investment. You know, they always say, you know, well, what if we, what if we, um, hire this person and they leave or we train them and they leave, you know, well, what if you don't train them and they stay? Yeah. You're always going to have that risk. Well, that training is an investment. That's one way to look at it. Um, but that's what it is. It's not just the technical skills. It's the, uh, you know, the person themselves. And two, one thing on the flip side, I've seen people gone through training. You put in the investment, mm -hmm. maybe it took six months. That's right. And now they're firing all cylinders and they immediately want to hit the targets that they see peers. Yeah. In the other industry, you're like, okay, the well, peer's been doing it 20 years and that's it. You know, not that you have to make up the six months we're losing, but like, you know, we did invest in you too. So yeah. there's kind of a balance. I see it from both sides. Mm -hmm. You've got a, yes, they are. You got to get them up to that sure. comparable spot because you're going to lose them otherwise. Mm -hmm. But then, too, it's kind of a – if if they don't recognize, mm -hmm. too, that you put that investment into them, that mm -hmm. you, you know, you bet on them as well. Yeah. If they don't see that, then that's also not a future player. So it yeah, kind of exactly. works both ways. It's got to be a symbiotic relationship where you're both putting in skin in the game. Yes. Um, and I think a really simple way to invest in people is to not – put yourself in their shoes in terms of if I were doing their job, what would I want? But more put yourself in the shoes. If you're obviously a CEO, business owner running the company, put yourself in the shoes of an employee. Well, there's, they're limited in a lot of ways that they can come to work and make an impact mm -hmm. and get something back from, you know, for them personally. And it's really kind of simple. If you just start a rhythm of sitting with those people and it could be a, you know, quarterly, annual, even, re, you know, um, review. It could be part of the thing yeah. you're already doing that's like skill oriented or you know, performance oriented, but make it more on the people side and just simply ask them, you know, um, how's it going? Like, do you feel like you're really making an impact with your work? Do you, you know, do you feel like you're getting something? Is it, is it somewhat fulfilling? You know, where are we hitting the yeah. mark on that? And then, get, and then, and hopefully, you know, over time, you build enough trust that they can tell you, be, be honest with you, that, um, yeah, no, I really am fulfilled with the work that I'm doing, and here's why, right? And, you know, I actually, we just had that this morning. Okay. When and um, one of the employees was excited about the work they're doing, and just was, you you could see in her face, she was amazed. Yeah. You know, we're in the land, Florida, and the impact we're making yeah. across the nation with different customers. So that's it. She was like thrilled that's it and so that was just a, a great feeling yeah. i, I want to bottle her up and have 20 of her yeah and you know it's not always about uh what they're paid or the benefits oh you know it changes well and, and does by the person I, I i think it's changed a lot too with um time frame there was that like quietly quitting 
Uh-huh. It was like that. You know, do you remember sure. seeing that? Oh, yeah. I was just like, oh, while you're quietly quitting, your employer's going to be quietly automating. That's like, right. <laughs> so, and, and that yeah. has played out in that world. And I think that's yeah. coming back um, because there is, I think it, it's, it, it's a symbiosis, you know, it goes mm-hmm. both ways. Employers got to realize that, yes, employees have other options, yeah. but then employees got to realize employers have other options too. Mm-hmm. So, and then even of staff that we bring in at entry level positions, um, I don't do this enough, but um, remind them enough, like for whatever time you're here, we'll get you to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Especially in the banking world, you know, if they are tellering and they just plan on doing that till they get through college or they, yeah. that's it's a functional fine. Thing. Yeah. That is completely fine. Mm-hmm. Let's have that conversation. In my program. We'll help you. I mean, yeah. I, you What's know, the end game I've for got that person? Friends today that employed ten years ago. Yeah, that wasn't their passion. They did a kick butt job while they're here, and now they're you know killing it in their other industries. Yeah, yeah. It's um you know the next point I had out here was having the right people in the right seats. If you follow the EOS method, op- uh, entrepreneur op- operating system, um, it's all about finding the right people that have the that fit the right role, and it's yes. not just skill, but it's more about are they going to find fulfillment in that position? And so I think that goes to the point of if you're having these great conversations with people about the direction, there's there's transparency about what's possible with that path. You have a, you know, a very driven person come in mm-hmm. and they don't want to sit in that teller seat very long. That's okay. If you have someone that says, I want to sit in this seat for four years and then yeah. I'm going to leave the company. I mean, Think about the freedom that they have to tell you that this is temporary for me, right? Yes. That's pretty awesome. That That is. Just not, it's a, there's no burden for them. Well, there's confidence in that when yeah. they say that. and it, you but, know. The, but on the other side, the driven person can feel freedom in that you're, you're helping them chart a path to say, okay, well, if you want to be, if you think you want to be here because paths change, then this is what it would take. Yeah. It takes approximately this amount of time to really get good at this job, which will build towards this job and have an open conversation about it. You're going to get so much more um, ownership out of that role that they're in They're, I mean, they're going to feel like they're the, you know, they're charting their own course completely Correct. in that, that role that and, they're starting. In. And one of my personal biggest drivers for growth of the organization is not for the sake necessary growth, but that's also Growth as to me, it's insurance of maintaining mm-hmm. your employees so they can continue to grow too. So right. they're not stagnant. So the growth we can do correlates over to longevity in their careers as well. For sure. So, you know, because I noticed that earlier on when we were really small 10, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. you would get somebody in, you know, maybe out of college, smart, you been doing this, and they're like, I don't see two steps up and they're already taken. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to move on, even if they liked it. So they didn't see any future path going forward. It wasn't, right. a, you know, so you almost have to get mm-hmm. to a, enough certain size. So then you do have them looking at, okay, I can learn this for a couple of years and there is room to move forward. That's right. There, there's enough. So you don't have People to People are always to that. looking for advancement, but they need your help to see where they can go. Yes. Um, and if you're not showing that to them, they're going to start to think that there's no nowhere to go. And then they sort of have a mental roadblock. Then they start looking other places at the grass is greener. Yes. Um, you know, so it, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, uh, but I think it's about being human and it's about being, um, you know, empathetic to a lar- large degree. If, if, if you're know, running a company and you have been an employee before, put yourself back in that mindset, the, those shoes of, I only have, I'm limited in the capacity that I can have an impact in this company and I can have a big impact in my role, but I have to really enjoy what I do. I have to see there's a path, and at the, you know, to some extent, find some fulfillment in it in terms of work. Um, and if you aren't open to that, then with your employees, then you're going to have tr- it's going to be problematic down the road. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, for listeners, we're going to have like some concrete <clears throat> steps for them because, sure. you know, how do you incorporate that? You know, do you, do you load in and maybe think about it, you know, an hour, uh, a minimum a couple hours a week. Mm-hmm. Think about that talk with your employees, look around. Well, I think that the first thing that's the simplest thing, if you don't already have performance reviews or some type of review that's on a frequency 
I would establish that because first, what it does is it allows you to set forth just on doing their work and the plan that you have for what that needs to be done and the performance of that role, which varies by role. Then you can come back and say, okay, well, um, you know, this is where we started. We both agreed this is kind of where we're headed. How did we end up? And you have a good, solid baseline for just And I'll tell you, that's one thing that is, you know, I'm not good at, so I make sure to put, yeah, have somebody that is good at that, that does yeah. performance reviews sure. and everything. For sure. Uh, and, yeah. it, it, you know, hey, you, <laughs> obviously you have different levels of management. Then, um, you know, the more junior manager still can find ownership in that that position. Um, and you're, you're, you know, you're reviewing their performance because they're, they're looking over a longer, you know, larger uh, staff underneath them. Yeah. Um, but I would say that's a baseline. And on top of that, the way that you can improve is by inserting that human element. So it's not just the performance of your job to the company's bottom line or to the company's, you know, metrics, but it's to you and your role, because if they're fulfilled in their role, the other part of it should take care of itself. I mean, it really should be exponential growth. Yeah. You know, if, if, if that person comes to work, I know some of your, your, your people and, you know, they come to work, they're, they're not like some of them on the the higher level are not ever really leaving work in their mind. They're always thinking, they're thinking about their it, job, absolutely. which is the right person for that role. You know, if they, they're trained in it, they have experience in it, all that's great. But if they're passionate about it and they're just reading articles and, you know, that's what they do for their morning coffee. Like <laughs> that's kind of the person you want to know. I know. Team. I love getting texts at night over the weekends. What yeah. about this? Right. I love it. Yeah. So, I mean, that person that is uh, fully owning their role, uh, meaning both the passionate side, but the accountability side. Uh, so it's not just all, you know, kicks and giggles. It's and doing all the things you love, but there's a side that has to be held accountable. Um, then that's the person who's the right person in the right seat, in my opinion. Um, you know, so it looks like we covered most of the things. I think the end game for, uh, for companies when they're, individually coaching their employees, but collectively is a good culture. Um, and I think that's made up both horizontally and vertically, vertically kind of to your point where you're leading the leaders, you're setting the tone and the, um, the path for what, where they're at and where they're headed and how they're leading their teams. Yeah. And then horizontally, it's not just the managers to their teams, but it's, it's each person to one another. So it could be in a pod of, you know, a team that works together every day and there's five or six people that are always talking and they're always leveling each other up. Or it could be just cross company where you have someone that works in the warehouse and someone works in the office and they pass by each other, but their, their values are the same. Their, you know, their intentions are the same. They're both fulfilled individually because you're making sure of that and they're going to cross pollinate. Yeah. So when that happens, then you have a really healthy culture of people who are fulfilled coming to work for the most part. I mean, work is work, works hard. Uh, it can't be, you know, I'm, I don't believe in the idea of family being, your, you know, your work being your family, your family is your family, your work is your work. We can be friends and we can be, you know, close and we can share life together and that kind of thing. But we're yeah. here to get a job done and serve customers. Um, yeah, you can do, you can have both at the same time. And right. then another, I mean, I remember as a kid, uh, uh, do, you know, do what you love. How many people can do that? Because the things that, yeah. you know, the stuff m maybe I love the most aren't going to pay the bills. So, that's right. you know, think well, about the. That's where I think the, the, the upper leadership really has to set the tone for it's not may not be what you love. But you're fulfilled to a large extent, in and doing it can it. get you what you love too. So you've kind of got correct. the mix and have quality. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of really happy employees that go to work every day excited because the job that they do allows them to do it well. They're for, perfectly suited mm -hmm. for it, and they can leave it there, and they can go home and you know build rifles or you know go fishing or do whatever hobby they yeah. do, and do it completely. Um, so you know, giving your employees that ability. Obviously, it's role specific, but given the ability to do that, it works perfect for that person. And, and actually, juxtapose the other person we were just talking about who doesn't want to leave it work. Yeah. They don't want to. And yeah, you're going to have a hybrid of all of that's it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think the end goal is is having a strong culture of people who are um, all working towards the same goal for the company, but individually are fulfilled in their work. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Like 
definitely got to keep that at the forefront. So investing in your team is a mindset first. And then there's you know, obviously a lot of practical things you can do. I think the EOS is a good place to start. People don't have a system to run their company because that's where we talk about um, right people, right seats. Not to just glaze over that. It's a big deal. Um, it is. And when you have someone in the wrong seat, you mm-hmm. you, you got to have that conversation immediately. Yeah. And I have notes for our next episode, but I'll just go ahead and say it now. But hiring is a big thing. You know, um, I I have this, the philosophy that I most attribute to, it's it's hard to do, but is to hire slow and fire fast. Because you, it, what it does is it ensures that the culture you're building horizontally is not disrupted by having someone there too long. Yes. That shouldn't be there. Um, yeah. W- one of uh, groups that I've been part of over the years, there's six of us CEOs mm-hmm. that would meet. And that was kind of the motto. Yeah. Hire slowly, fire swiftly. Yeah. And uh, you you're take doing back a, and it does. You're doing a, a justice to the person too. I've seen and heard so many stories of people who are thankful that they got fired <laughs> because they were like, I was agonizing over, I knew I shouldn't be here. I didn't want, you know, and. And when I think of the, the fire swiftly is when you have that team, that's, that's good. And now you've got somebody that is just spoiling it. That's right. For whatever reason, it, maybe it they're go to crap quick. Yeah. Maybe they're not on yeah. time. It's affecting everybody's or complaining all them. the time. You know, it, it can be a mire of things yeah. or, and also, I've seen it where the team likes that individual, so then they pick up after them. Mm-hmm. They do their work to be mm-hmm. like, oh, come on, come on, come on. But they're just over time, they're taking advantage of it, self-deprecating. Yeah. They're, right. they're going, you've you've got to take care of it swiftly. And that's why culture is such an important thing to nurture. Because yeah. where goes the culture goes your company and goes the experience of your customers and goes your revenue. I honestly think that that's the whole thing. And if you're not staying on top and then even more so investing, you can get a bad apple in there and the whole bunch goes. Yeah. And I've had it too, where there's just wrong fit, wrong Mm -hmm. personality for that group. Mm -hmm. Just simple thing is good, good person, good everything. It just wrong fit. Yep. And you have to um, have that tough discussion. That's right. Yeah. The leader sets the tone for the company. Uh, for the organization, and then each individual person, and I think this is good to tell people, like each individual, individual person sets the tone for their counterpart. Well, I see it on software companies all the time because when we, I mean, that's a lot of our vendors are software-related companies. Mm-hmm. And they'll be in the startup phase and they've got their, you know, a few engineers and, you know, you've got the the people there, if it's there. And then they've had some success, and then they get a little success. Mm-hmm. And they automatically go out there and hire all these brand managers. Yeah. And say, oh, we're going to customer feedback and everything. Yeah. Your customer feedback was just providing the service yeah. well. Let them, That's use it. The, let them use the product and tell you. Correct. Yeah. And then it was this whole new culture they brought on mm-hmm. that took away from the whole reason they actually were successful in the beginning. I can, I can totally and, agree with that. I see it all over lots of marketers can really screw some stuff up because they come in with all their different ideas of how things should work. And um, a lot of times it's much more simple than what they're saying it should be. Um, And so from a cultural standpoint, but also from, you know, revenue generating Mm -hmm. standpoint, it can, it can get out of control really really quickly. All right. That was a good one. We're going to move on to the next one. Um, If you like this, stick around and we'll be talking about investing in your business. Excellent.